Alrighty. So, I have tried to record this video several times, and I'm not telling you that to, like, make you feel bad for me or anything. I'm just telling you that because it shows how important this video is to me. And anyway, we're going to try again, and I'm going to tell you the story of the last few months of my life and how I got to live here in North Carolina and not in Canada and not in Maine and not in Washington anymore. Um, it's obviously been a very stressful few months. I've shared a little bit here and there on Twitch and on Twitter, and I've shared a little bit more on Patreon. And now I really want to just sit down and have a talk with you guys about where I'm at in life and how I got to where I'm at now. And, uh, yeah, let's just talk about it. This is a very important video to me. So if you watch all the way to the end, that means a lot to me. If for some reason you don't want to listen to me ramble for like half an hour, then this video is not going to be for you, but just know that this isn't going to be a, a terribly interesting video right now. Um, but it's something that I need to make and get out there so I can start working on other things. Um, because I really need to tell this story. So the last few months have been incredibly stressful. Um, the last decade or so, just about a decade, I lived in Washington state. You know, I moved out there in 2012, lived in Seattle, was living the best life. Uh, you know, I met Brooke, we dated for a few years, we got married in 2015. Um, you know, Brooke went through immigration and moved to the States and we lived in Seattle for a while and then that got more expensive and then it kept getting more expensive and then it kept getting more expensive and every single place we moved to, they raised the rent by hundreds of dollars. One of the Washington state is actually one of the states that doesn't have a cap on how much rent can be raised every year. So some states have like protections on that. Some countries have protections on, on rent for renters. Washington state is quite bad for that. So basically you can be priced out of your home and then they just, you know, cycle through tenants constantly and that's how they do it, um, which is pretty messed up if you ask me. So we were basically, you know, long story short, we were priced out of Washington. Uh, we stopped being able to afford to live there. Even in the, the least expensive areas, it was too expensive. Um, you know, in 2020... Uh, I went through an experience that put me in the hospital. Uh, some of you remember that. Um, and truthfully, me going through that experience uh, slowed me down a lot. It made it harder to work. And I needed a, a, a long time of recovery from a traumatic thing that happened. Um, and so I wasn't able to work as much. Uh, we weren't making enough money to afford the rising costs of everything and of course now we're in a recession and there's a high housing market crisis and there's inflation so things just kept getting worse and getting worse and getting worse and i'm sure that some of you can probably relate um and so when you know back in june of this year me and brooke had been looking around washington looking for a new place to live that wasn't going to cost us an arm and a leg and we found a few places, but all of them were in the tiniest towns possible in Washington. And we went to one to go tour it and, and see if it was going to work for us. And it was a cute little house. It was an older house. And it would have been mostly fine if not for all the red flags from the people who were renting it out. Um, and so, like, we, we came away with all these red flags and we were driving back home thinking about our next step, like where are we going to look next? Are we going to look in a different state? What are we going to do? Are we going to go to the East Coast? We talked about that a little bit. Um, and ultimately, we started talking about the idea of me and Brooke, my wife, going and living back with our respective families, like being long distance again. Uh, at the beginning of our relationship, Right. We were long distance. She lived up in Canada and I was down in the States. And, you know, it was like a 15 hour drive to go see her. Um, and, you know, we made that work for three years um, before we, we, we got married. And now we're 
we're back to that now. Um, so I brought this idea up to her. It's actually something I had been thinking about for a little bit, but I wasn't even sure about it myself, right? So I was like, well, I'll bring it up and me and Brooke will talk about it and we'll see if it's something that will work for us. And Brooke was pretty quickly on board with the idea. I, I didn't think she would be Im like immediately like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But she was. She was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. We should go back to our respective families for a while. Not forever, but for a while, maybe a year. And sort out our finances and reorganize our lives and get ourselves back up on our feet after the hospital and after the price increases and after all that. Get back up on our feet save a little money and make it work in the meantime. Like it's going to suck. We knew it was going to suck and it does suck being long distance with your wife, you know, like she doesn't live with me. It's so, it's such a weird alien concept to us. And I, I, I've realized that through talking to friends and family about this over the last few months, I've realized that this is actually a fairly common thing. Um, you know, that that is happening right now where people are moving back in with their families or, you know, moving in with friends or what have you to save money. Uh, cause it really is, it's, it's basically impossible to live on your own as a single person. I mean, we did have two income sources at least. So that helped us stay there for as long as we did, you know, but eventually we just got fully priced out of Washington state. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, and, and on the flip side of this, too, if Brooke goes back to Canada, right, like she has, she's a Canadian citizen. She has Canadian universal health care on her side. So if she needs any medical attention, uh, you know, God forbid, um, that's available to her. And that was always something in the back of our minds, especially after me going to the hospital. And, you know, like, what if we need to go to the hospital again? What if we end up in the emergency room for any reason? Like, what that, that would destroy us it almost did when i was in the hospital in 2020 um so yeah that's where we're at brooke went up to live with her mother uh my mother-in-law has a basement suite uh so brooke is like comfortable has enough room she brought oliver our cat with her so they are both comfortable and happy with a plenty with plenty of space and decent internet to work and live and save money, um, and she has health care. It's a pretty good deal, uh, you know. Actually, Brooke got the Brooke honestly got the better end of the deal out of this than I did. And uh, my my mom came out from from Maine, where I grew up. She flew out to help me drive across the country with my stuff in a tiny trailer towed behind my tiny car. Which we'll get to that in a second because that's been a, a point of contention recently. I moved to the East Coast. We drove across the country. It was a wonderful time with my mom. I'm glad that I had that time to spend with her and chat with her a lot about stuff and, and really vent about all the things that were going on. And, um, you know, I got to Maine and realized very quickly that that wasn't going to work for me for a number of reasons. There's so many reasons why that wasn't going to work for me. Um... And, you know, I just the idea of moving back in with my parents, um, you know, wasn't a great thought in the first place. Not that I don't love my parents. I do. But having my own space and having enough space in a place that I'm comfortable um, is very important, especially since I work from home and do creative work. You need to have a space where you can be creative and not worry about anything else. The Internet situation out in the woods of Maine, also not great. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so I got there and I was there for less than 24 hours before I called up some friends and started discussing the idea of moving closer to them, to, to my friends. And ultimately I ended up driving down the East coast and moving to North Carolina, uh, to be near my friends, Stephen and Mal and, uh, Dan and Brandon, who I live with now. Um, and, Splitting the rent uh, with two other people has been great and uh, definitely is helping save money. And in that time, because I had been planning on living in Maine, in that time, I was floating around. I ended up living uh, for about a month with my friend Emil Chugga Conroy. Uh, he was so, so 
wonderful and gave me a, a room in his house to work out of and sleep on an air mattress for a month. And, uh, you know, I was hoping to, after that month, get into a place, but it took longer than that to get a place. And we ended up staying in an Airbnb for a month, which I'm so grateful for Brandon, um, who, you know, booked all that and organized all that and helped get um, our, our new housing situation sorted out as well. Uh, what a godsend. And um, yeah, and so, 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 I mean, that brings me to, to now in November, after two months of floating around the East Coast and going through a stressful move across the country and being apart from my wife, here we are. I'm in North Carolina now living with my friends. And it's been great um, being around other people, um, especially in a, in a very stressful, uh, tumultuous time. But man, I'll tell you, the move was made so much more stressful. I won't get into too many details about this, but I want to talk about this briefly. We were supposed to have, me and Brooke were supposed to have one final day to spend together in Washington before we were going to be long distance again. And we were denied that uh, because some people in our lives who were dealing with some problems of their own in a poor way that negatively affected us um, ended up moving up our move out date by a couple of days. And at, la at the last, quite literally the last possible minute, like it was 30 minutes before. Anyway, <sighs> my point is, is that um, some people in our lives who wronged us made this whole process so much more stressful and between that and driving across the country and figuring out that Maine wasn't going to work for me and driving down the East Coast and floating around at Emil's place and floating around at the Airbnb and trying to find a place to live for like three months there or two months. You can see that that was a lot. And I still managed to like work and stream and do stuff in all of that. And I'm really proud of myself for being able to pull that off. I, I'm a, a fairly flexible person uh, out of necessity. Um, and, you know, I'm glad that I can handle stuff like that for the most part. But I'm also really, really, really happy to have amazing friends around who are so supportive in this crazy, tumultuous time of need that I had. I was able to call, like, I got to Maine, and I was able to, I called Brooke, and I was confused about where I should be going next and what my next move should be, because in all of this, my biggest thing was I was focused on making sure that Brooke was going to be happy and healthy and safe, and knowing that made me comfortable enough to just go and do whatever the hell I was going to do, and I hadn't really thought through my part of the, the move very well, to be honest. And so I called up Brooke, and I was talking to her about it, and Brooke was like, you should call Steven. So I called Steven and Mal, and I talked to them a little bit about some ideas and stuff. And they brought up the fact that Brandon, their, their Twitch mod, Brandon, uh, and Dan, their friend Dan, uh, also my friend, they're, they're, we're all friends, uh, were going to be moving to their area soonish. And it just lined up perfectly with my move, so I called Dan and I was like, hey, Dan, you want to be roommates? And it just kind of like locked into place perfectly um, for me to be able to move to this area and be near friends. And this is the first time in my whole life that I've lived near friends, by the way. Like growing up, I didn't really have a ton of friends locally. And I was also very, you know, antisocial and didn't want to deal with other people. And then when I became an adult and I was more social, I moved to Washington where I knew nobody. Like I had like one or two friends there and they both moved off. Um, and I, it was just me and Brooke in Washington for years and years and years and years. And so I felt very isolated out there. And, you know, um, us going back to our respective families, like Brooke has friends up there. And I still didn't really have that many friends in Maine. So I would have been isolated in that way, although with my family. So, you know, I ended up here in North Carolina, and uh, this is where I'm going to be for the next, I mean, year at least. Um, and in that time, my goal is to save money 
And ultimately, I would like to move to Canada to be with Brooke. And a lot of, along this way, through this journey, um, you know, a lot of people have asked me, you know, why didn't Brooke, um, why, why didn't you go to Canada with Brooke immediately? And my answer is always, well, immigration is a very costly and long-winded process. So that was my biggest hurdle. And, uh, you know, the other question is, that follows up with that is, why didn't Brooke come with you to the East Coast? And while that would have worked, um, I think that getting a place on our own for the two of us uh, without splitting rent with other people actually would have still been a lot of money. And But also... Healthcare. Brooke has remind, remember. Brooke has healthcare in Canada. We do not have in the United States of America universal healthcare, and that is a real, real reason why she wants to move back to Canada. Uh, and there's so much more to this that I, 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 I can't really talk about. I don't really want to talk about or share. There's so many more other stressful points of you know things that happened and thoughts about this. Um, that are just a little too negative for what I'm trying to convey with this video. Um, so I won't be talking about everything, but just just know that it has been a very stressful few months. And I am on the other side of that stress now, but of course new stresses are coming up and um, you know I'm just dealing with them as they come, but nothing will be as stressful as those last few months. Uh, to, to be perfectly honest, like that was the most stressed I've been since 2020 when I was in the hospital. Um, so splitting rent with other people has been very helpful. Um, but if you want to help you watching, if you want to help, uh, I am going to use this as an opportunity to invite you to join up on Patreon. Um, Patreon has been kind of a godsend throughout all of the, these last couple years. And recently I've put a lot more time into Patreon. I even added a new tier. Um, so if you're interested in what we have to offer over there, I do post bonus videos every month. I do a bonus live stream. Now this is part of the new tier. Uh, the first one is coming up this Sunday. Uh, and you know, I, I, you probably seen at the end of my videos, I post the credits for the highest tier, uh, at the end of every video. Um, and so if you want to help, uh, out in any way, uh, with this next phase of our lives, um, consider doing that or supporting in any other numerous ways, Twitch or what have you, um, that would mean a lot to me. So thank you for considering that. I mean, you know, take care of yourself first before you take care of me, of course, uh, cause it, right now I'm sure that everybody, it's a tough time for everyone. And, you know, I don't expect it to get much better anytime soon, but that's where I'm at. It has been a crazy few months, my guys. It really has. <laughs> Every little bit helps. Um, you know, if you support on Patreon, just know that that's going to go towards keeping the lights on, keeping the internet on, but also helping me be able to see my wife regularly. Um, and also just in general, making the content better and being able to make more of it so it's very helpful um i tried to make this video like three other times and i'm still not sure if i said all the things that i wanted to say so i hope i did um i tried not to i tried not to to make this a sob story <laughs> but i don't know if it worked i just wanted to tell you what's been going on so everybody's on the same page mostly but it's a very heavy topic for me. And like, again, there's so much more to it that I could talk about, but, uh, but also I really can't like, there's, there's so much more to this that like is so private and personal and just having people in our lives who caused more problems for us and then having to like cut those people out of my lives or out of our lives to, to, um, you know, to create boundaries. Um, I'm pretty good about creating boundaries now. It just sucks to have to do it, even if you're good at it. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just sucks. So I am feeling positive about the future and I'm excited about what new adventures I'm going on. I've always, you know, chosen my own adventure 
Um, I'm very thankful to my mother-in-law and to my mom for helping us move. And we couldn't have done it without them, truly. Like, my mother-in-law kept us all sane during the final moments of before we all went our separate ways. And my mom helped me drive across the country. Like, they are truly the two most amazing people in, in our lives. Um, and I'm very thankful for them. <sighs> I think I think I said all the things I wanted to say. Thank you for watching. Um, I'm glad this didn't go on for half an hour like I thought it would. Because <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't interesting to watch. But hopefully you got some insight on where I'm at with life. And the next steps for me are to make more podcasts. Uh, you know, make more vlogs. Uh, do a ton more gaming stuff. More streams. Um, you know, over the holidays, I'm, I am going to be visiting Brooke over the holidays. So maybe there will be some vlogs with her. Um, you know, and please go support my wife as well. Go check her out on Twitch. She does streams right now. She's sick. So she just got back from a wedding. So she is sick from that and is trying to slowly get back into streaming again and stuff too. And she's a, she's a VTuber. She's getting her VTuber model rigged and, um, and it will be fully animated soon, very soon, hopefully by the end of this month. So look out for all of that. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're The freaking Team Jepson is going to be popping off here in the next year. So keep an eye out. And thank you for all of your help and all of your support and your wonderful comments. I am eternally grateful for this community. And I can't wait to see what's next. Thank you for coming along with me on this journey. Let's do some more. Hey, by the way, before we end this, do you want to see where I sleep now? It's kind of fascinating. Check this out. Can you see that? Look at this. Look at, <laughs> look at this. Uh, I've actively chosen to sleep on the floor because I was like, I could get a bed, but like my wife isn't here. I don't need a huge bed. So I'll get a small bed. But then I was thinking like, oh, well, this isn't going back in the thing very well. And then I was thinking like, oh, I should just get a floor mattress. So that's what I did. I got like a little futon floor mattress. <laughs> it's adorable, isn't it? Boy, howdy. Um, yeah, anyway, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys in the next one. Man. Life is strange. Really takes you on a trip sometimes, doesn't it? <laughs>